Hey, hey you, yes you, see all these wonderful people right here? They are my Patreons. With the support I get from them, I can afford to do my passion as a career and bring you guys weekly videos. Want to join them? For just $1 a month, you can get videos 24 hours before anyone else. And for even higher tiers, you can get Polaroids, letters and mystery boxes from me to you. And even fursuit parts, not to mention my eternal thanks. So what are you waiting for? Become a Patreon today via the link in the description. Thanks again, enjoy the video. Hello and happy Sky High Saturday or Sunday, wherever you are out in the world. And welcome to another Q&A video. This is a series where I answer questions you guys have left over on my Discord server. Link to join that will be down below. And without further ado, we're gonna get straight on into it. So this first one comes from Blueberry Sands who asks, how much do you spend a month on fursuit supplies? And six people said, this to be a again this is going to be a how long is a piece of string segment so it depends on how many fursuits do i take on that month uh do i run out of any supplies what is global shipping prices like at that current time what is the exchange rate do any equipment need servicing there's so much stuff that files into that so it depends on the month i spend quite a lot of money um every month just buying materials and maintaining my equipment and buying things that I need. Several hundred dollars. Let's just put it somewhere in that bracket. Let's just guess with that. Mithril asks, uh, what specifically did you love about your trip to Japan? Um, if we're talking on the furry side, I really loved seeing how furry looked in um, a different place in the world and a different culture in Japan. It was really different and it was really, really interesting to kind of see how they do things and how their conventions differ. Um, in terms of the non um, furry parts of Japan. I just loved immersing myself in that different country's culture as being as respectful as I can and learning as much as I can before I go, even a bit of Japanese. Not that I'm very good, but being able to actually travel internationally without my parents for the first time, that was a lot of fun. And I absolutely loved the shrines. They're just so beautiful and peaceful. So it's a really good place to kind of go in there and immerse yourself into that culture. And it was weird, it doesn't matter like if you're in a shrine and you're next to a main road and you walked in, the traffic noise seemed to just disappear. It's so quiet and calm in there and I love it. I love it so much. And also eating Japanese food every day was also very nice. Next question is from Minwi Doobie. Will you ever go to a smaller furry convention like Anthro Weekend Utah? Okay, because clearly I have to say this at least 60 times. I'm not in America, so chances are if I'm flying and if I'm spending two, three thousand dollars to fly to America, I'm probably going to be going for something like MFF, a convention I'm either like, like have something on at, like if I'm a guest of honor or if something like, you know, something like that. I would love to go to a lot of different cons, but the smaller conventions in the US at least, they're really not worth me flying out for several thousand dollars. I don't make that much money on fursuit making in YouTube, but you can help me make that much money, if you like, by supporting me on Patreon. Haha, -ha. plug, plug, pluggy, plug, 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 plug. However, in um, Australia, of course, I try to go to conventions when I can. I was meant to go to Aurora, but that got canceled twice due to COVID. And I am currently actually a featured panelist at a pop culture convention being held pretty close to home called Akacon. Um, I will be there. For the day, me, me, Fox Films, and Foxy Malone, CEO of Ferdu, will be doing a panel. So if you are in the Brisbane, South Brisbane, South Side area, feel free to pop by and say hello. I will be there. I'll do a video covering that closer to the date. Yes, I do go to smaller conventions, at least in Australia, when I can. Vulu asks, what did you eat on the 21st of August for breakfast? And six people have said this. Um, well, funnily enough, that morning I was very hungover and... I felt like death, so I actually ordered myself a big vegetable, big veg, the big breakfast, but the vegetarian version from the coffee club because I wanted it and it looked really good. It had like halloumi and mushrooms and yumminess. It was good, good hangover cure. But there you go, <laughs> that's what I had. I felt awful and I ate a lot of fried vegetables. It was a good time. Chrysalis asks, is it possible to put earring holes along the outer edges of ears for removable earrings? And how would one go about doing this? And they put an image of the rings on the edge. Um, if you wanted removable, then really high powered magnets are your best friend. When you're going through fur with magnets, you really need to make sure that it is strong. Buy the most expensive magnets you can afford for in the size that you want, because you're gonna need that strength to be able to stick it through the fur. They're too small to be really Velcro. You could possibly get away with ones with like pins so you could stab it into the ear, kind of like a real piercing. 
um, but definitely magnets are the way to go for that one. Fiendhound asks, what is a good fabric for horns? What is your preference for a good fabric for horns? That's again, up to you. I've seen people use velvet. I've seen people use minky. I've seen people use vinyl. I've seen people use fleece. Whatever tickles your fancy. Um, things like vinyl is usually good for like a really hard, like actual horn keratin look. Um, then you got minky, which is really soft. Fleece is really good if you want to like dry brush it, it can blend really, really nicely. Um, velvet is like firm like vinyl, but you can get it like fluffy. It depends, it's up to you. Use your imagination, get creative. Okay, Tinny asks, what is the easiest project for a beginner sewer and fursuit creator to make? Well, judging by your minor role in my server, you a, a small child. So that depends. If you have a sewing machine, then I'd probably recommend a tail. Uh, either way, I'd honestly recommend tails because it's just two pieces of fabric and then a fancy thing for the butt. For the butt loops, you don't even have to get fancy with that. Tails, always tails. And you can crack out so many of them and you can use cheap fabric, um, cheap furs, and that looks fine. So it's a really good way to start out. Okay, final question. Hunter asks, what is the most abstract and impossible requested feature on a first suit you've been asked to make? And eight people have said this. Probably air conditioning. Yeah, they were like, oh, can you put that air conditioning thing I've seen in first suits? And I'm like, what, what do you mean air conditioning thing? And they're like, oh, you know, when like, you have the air conditioning going in the suit. And I'm like, do you mean like a fan in the muzzle? And they're like, no, 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 air conditioning. And I'm like, what are you? on about and they kept arguing with me that it was a thing it was a thing people had hooked up air conditioning units to blow air around the suit and i'm like uh that doesn't exist i i'm really sorry don't know what to tell you i certainly can't offer it. if you can find someone who does good for you but also good luck to you because nobody does yeah that's definitely probably the weirdest one i've seen and it seems like a lot of normies somehow believe that we have air conditioning in our fursuits. I don't know where that belief has come from. I wish. It would be so nice to be like crispy and cool in here, but no, it's sweaty and messy and horrible. And I think that is all the questions we have time for today. Thank you guys so, so much for writing in. Um, I'll probably do another Q&A video later. So if you want to leave me some questions, go join our Discord. If you like, have to be of the age of 13, but you know, if you like, come join. And I will see you guys next week. Follow me for more first-seat-making content. Join the Blab Army today. Click subscribe and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.